Okay, so we can look at that and go, well, yeah, you know, we have to change the variables. That's normal. So well, let's look at what happens if we do change them. So one of the things we could do is we can increase the volume, meaning the, the length of time that you are working out. So if you're doing an hour workout, uh, it's not so bad if you're doing 30 minutes of cardio, you can increase it to 45 or maybe 60 minutes. But what do you do when you tap it out and you're already training at 60 minutes? What are you going to do? Go an hour and a half? I mean, it gets to the point where you, you've got to look at that. Um, if it's not longer per session, then you might be thinking, well, I'll just add another day or two in my week. Could be true. And again, if you're doing three days a week, you can, yeah, potentially work up to five. If you're doing four, you can maybe get up to six. But what if you're already going five days a week? What if you're already doing six days a week? You know, are you going to go every single day? And is that realistic for you to maintain? Given our, typically our work schedules, our family commitments, obligations, things that we have going on, it's kind of a tough thing unless your job is working out, which, you know, for most of us, that's not happening. Um, so, you know, you've got those ways to increase volume. But again, the more volume you put in, while it's different if you're doing three days a week, four days a week to get up to maybe five or six, yeah, you know, that you might be able to do that. Even a five day a week model might be uh, maintainable and it's not necessarily a, an unhealthy thing. But again, there's that cutoff, that point of diminishing returns where when we, when we push past that, we start to accumulate more stress than we can effectively manage. Remember, behind the scenes, stress is the big factor here that determines our success or our failure in achieving our, our fat loss goals. So if we push too much volume, two workouts that are too long, workouts that are happening too frequently, too often, and we can't recover properly from them, um, we start to increase the amount of physical stress on our muscles and joints from all the repetition of going through it and going through it. You know, it, it starts to add up in terms of stress. So we get to a point of diminishing returns where when we start to overstress our body, we're piling on stress on top of stress on top of stress. And eventually what happens when you overstress a system that's stressed out, it starts to break down. And this is why a lot of people who do that, they're chronic over exercisers. Uh, runners are notorious for this because they're running all the time and they end up with, you know, knee problems or back problems or hip and foot and ankle issues and, you know, uh, plantar fasciitis and, you know, all these things, IT band syndromes, friction syndromes, all this stuff, hamstring pulls and strained shin splints, all these things that happen as a result of just too much volume. So the other thing that you might be thinking, well, I don't have to go so much and, and, and emphasize all the volume. Well, what we can do is emphasize maybe more intensity. What if instead of going uh, more often, I, I increased how hard I work? Well, again, it's an option that you have. And to some degree, yes, it does work. Higher intensity workouts have shown to be very beneficial and very uh, much more effective in terms of burning fat compared to doing you know, lower intensity, longer, more frequent workouts like steady state cardio. Right? But again, with the intensity model, there gets to be that point of diminishing returns. If you go full out really, really hard, well, guess what? The, the harder you train, then the, the, you're not going to be able to go as long because you're, you're using so much more energy. Your ability to maintain that intensity, the time that you can do it, it shortens up. You can't do that as long as when you're training less intensely. Also, the recovery factor is a big issue because when you're hammering your body really hard, it's going to take longer to recover. So, you know, what? it depends where you're building your intensity model. You can't realistically expect to go 100% five days a week. You know, it, you might do it for a short period of time, but again, you're gonna overly stress your body you're going to start exceeding your body's capacity to recover from the stress you're putting on it. And again, the model starts to fall apart. So, you know, that's really the catch with the cardio um, in, in, in terms of, you know, what it's doing. And so this is for this reason why I really heavily favor resistance training versus cardio. And the other reason, if you, if you start thinking, well, okay, resistance training, I could do that, but then you know, I already mentioned cardiovascular fitness was important, so where does that come in? You might be asking, am, am I then just not doing cardio? Well, that doesn't make sense. Well, 
you you would be right in 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 thinking that way. And the thing here is that because you're doing resistance training doesn't necessarily mean that you are foregoing cardio.